try. All right, so we're starting with 16.30. Uh, and let's take a look at all this, all the questions here. The first one is 1,4-cyclohexadiene. This is a molecule that's come up, uh, I think, today and maybe in the previous class. So if you have a cyclohexane, and then this is some kind of diene, that means that there's two double bonds in it. We have one at carbon one and one at carbon four. So if we number the carbons, one, two, three, four, five, six, we put a double bond at carbon one and we put a double bond at carbon four. And that's one, four cyclohexadiene. And you can see that that's an isolated diene, isn't it? It is isolated. Whereas if we have one three cyclohexadiene, we do the same thing. I could even copy this over. So if I just copy this and paste it over here, oops, all I need to do is delete one of the pi bonds. And then the other pi bond is gonna be at the third carbon. And you can see that this is conjugated, conjugated. And this is locked in the s cis conformation. And so one three cyclohexadiene is a, a diene that we saw several times in Diels auto reactions in this chapter. The next one is Z, which stands for Zuzamin or together. Um, Z13 pentadiene. So if I just draw a pentadiene, so 13 pentadiene, I have, let's see here, I've got one, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, like this. If I put a double bond at carbon one and then a double bond at carbon two, well, it doesn't give you a locant for the Z. It doesn't tell you, is it the first one or the third one? But the thing is, at carbon number one, if this is one, two, three, four, five, there is no E and Z because there's two hydrogens on this end. So the Z must refer to the third carbon. But you can see that the way that I have it written here, it's E. Now, how do I know that? Because it's int gagan, the biggest group here and the biggest group here are opposite or eposite, as my students like to say sometimes. So in order to make this zuzamin or together, I have to delete a chunk of it here. So I'm going to put this back together. Um, three, four, five. And there we go. And now my fifth carbon is going to be over here like that. And so this is Z13-pentadiene. The next one, we've got two uh, double bonds, uh, two Z, four E, hepta. Uh, two, four, diene. So let's just start by putting seven carbons because this is a hepta. So if we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like this. And if I number them, so this is carbon one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. On my second carbon, I've got a double bond. And on my fourth carbon, I've got a double bond. Well, the fourth one looks good because the two main groups are opposite this one and oops this one and this one however in carbon two the two groups are not zuzamin they are not together so what i'm going to do is i'm going to move this molecule over here a little bit and to make it zuzamin or together i'll erase this like that and i'll put this bond going up like that okay so now if i renumber those one two three you can see that the double bond on carbon two, that the two big groups are together, right? You can see that the two hydrogens are also Z or Zuzalman, right? Like that. So there you go. So that's two Z, four E, hepta two, four diene. Then the next one is two, three dimethyl, one, three butadiene. That's also a molecule that came up several times. If you draw one, two, three, four, so butane, and this is a diene, it has a double bond at carbons one and three. So it's gonna look like one here and one here, like this. Then we have a methyl group at carbon two and another one at carbon three, like that. And you can even rotate this sigma bond to draw the molecule as we saw it several times, because we used it um, as, a, as a diene in some diels alder reactions. So there you go, that's two, three dimethyl, 1,3-butadiene. Next one I wanted to look at was 16.33. So 16.33, let's see. It, the question asks us, in each of the following pairs, identify the compound that liberates the most heat upon hydrogenation. So it's gonna have the, the most 
negative delta H upon combustion, okay? So in A, if we compare 1,4-cyclohexadiene versus 1,3-cyclohexadiene, which one would liberate more heat when it undergoes combustion? Well, the one that's going to liberate the most heat is the one that's going to have the highest potential energy, right? When you burn it, it's going to release the most energy. The one that is going to have the lower delta H is going to be the one that's what is more stable. So we're looking for the one that is least stable. And we know that there's stability that's gained when you have a conjugated system. And so since this one has an isolated diene, it is less stable, and therefore it's going to release more heat upon hydrogenation. Same thing in B. If we look at B, so this is um, 16.33B. Let me just draw the two compounds here. Oops. I could draw them neatly. That would be even better. So we have this diene, and then we have this diene. You can see that both of them have one double bond in the ring, and both of them have one double bond outside of the ring. However, here, the double bond is conjugated, and here, they are isolated. So since here they are isolated, there's no conjugation, therefore, this one is going to have a higher potential energy, and it's going to release more heat upon hydrogenation. All right, let's take a look at question 16.35. So 16.35. The question asks us, draw the major product expected when 1,3-butadiene, so let's draw 1,3-butadiene, is treated with HBr at 0 degrees Celsius, 0 degrees Celsius, and show the mechanism of its formation. Well, remember that these are kinetic, kinetic conditions, and therefore, the 1,2 adduct is going to predominate. One, two, adduct, right? So if we draw a curved arrow that shows the addition of the hydrogen here to form an allylic carbocation, which is going to look like this, okay? We end up with something that looks like that, okay? And we're only asked to show the major product here. Well, here's our carbocation, and now we have our bromide, which is going to be able to come in in attack at this position, but let's draw the resonance contributor just for fun. I'm not gonna draw the curved arrow this time. I could show you quickly. It's gonna be like that, but you're gonna end up with this resonance, oops, where's my black pen? With this resonance contributor, we have the double bond here and you have the positive charge here. So again, the bromide can attack either one of these carbocations. So we have our bromide here, we have our bromide here, okay? So the bromide can attack either this position or it could attack this position. If it attacks the first one, you end up with this, and this is going to be racemic, of course. If it attacks on this primary allylic carbocation, you end up with this, which is not racemic because this is not a stereocenter, but this is going to be your major major product. Why? Because it's the 1,2 adduct that's formed at zero degrees Celsius. If we move on to 16.36, 16.36, it asks us a similar question, but now you're doing the reaction at 40 degrees Celsius. So if you take the same diene and you treat it with HBr, but now you're at 40 degrees Celsius, now you're going to get the 1,4 adduct predominating. So you're going to get the addition of the hydrogen to form the allylic carbocation. So you can practice drawing that. You can draw the resonance contributor, which looks like this. Then same thing as before. We have our bromide here and here. And the bromide can attack as a nucleophile on this carbon, or it can attack here. We can end up with the racemic compound that we drew in the last one. This is racemic. And we can also end up with this compound, which is not racemic because this is not a stereocenter. However, in this case, this will be our major product. Why? Because we're at 40 degrees Celsius, and so the 1,4 adduct will predominate.